However, we only get there because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Amen. This evening I'm going to do something a little different. I know in circumstances and situations like this, we have a lot of preaching. However, I'm going to stick to the word and do some lecture. Now, the interesting thing, what I'm going to do, I know Brother Washington said so you're going to have questions that you can ask after. I'm going to actually give you the opportunity to ask questions while we go. Alright, so just stick your hands in the air, give me about 5 to 10 minutes, and after that you can stick your hand in the air and ask me questions as we go, so I can help clarify and help the church. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen a dark cloud roll in? Hear the thunder? See the lightning? And then no rain? When that happens, you have every single thing that can kill, but nothing that can bring life. In our churches today, we are suffering for a lack of intellectual development. We are suffering for, because of a lack of intellectual development. We have individuals, they, they can excite a crowd. They can really get you all charged up. A lot of thunder. They can even throw in some scriptures there, a lot of lightning. But the thing that's going to help you us grow and mature, it is usually absent. Now I'll tell you this, as we preachers mature, so does the church. If preachers are not maturing, the church is not maturing. In sentences like this, we are good at stroking our own egos and saying what a marvelous job we have done. However, when the church is still choking on milk, it says how much of a job we have not done. And I want to thank Brother Gary for the excellent job that he did and laying the groundwork so that we can get into this parable. Now, as he mentioned, a parable has nothing to do with an earthly story of the meaning. Jesus, in his wisdom, takes something that people can understand and throw it alongside something that's a little more difficult so that they can grasp the concept. Listen to me carefully. Jesus' whole intent in communicating was so that individuals can understand or they can understand what was being said. More times than not in our churches, we are seldom interested in folks understanding as much as we are interested in hearing, good job, well done. Well, I was assigned the, the topic on the wheat and the weeds. If you use the King James Version, it's commonly known as the wheat and the tears. All right. Now, in every single church, you will always have a blend. You will have some folks who are wheat, and you're going to have some folks who are tears or weeds. That's just the nature of what we involve in. Yes, the problem is that most of our churches have allowed the wheat tear concept or the wheat weed concept to become the norm rather than the exception. Yes, sir. So our churches, we allow all sorts of things to happen and all sorts of things to go on and we camouflage it with the world, but they're just weeds or wheat among us and we got to let them grow together. Let me go ahead and say unequivocally that when Jesus Christ gave this parable, he was not giving the church an excuse to do nothing. He was not telling the church we can just sit back idly and let sin flourish. Being a victim of sin as well. I know how it is when a preacher sins. When a preacher sins, we throw the book at them. However, when the folks in the pews sin, we give them a tap on the back and say, keep on going the way you are going. One thing I do, do thank you for is helping me get to heaven. All right. All right. Because when you point out the bad stuff in me, it gives me an opportunity to get better. Yes, sir. However, when we as preachers fail to point out the bad stuff in you, we are setting you up for hell. So really and truly, our churches are in a terrible condition, not because preachers mess up, not because leaders mess up, our preachers, are, sorry, our churches are in a terrible condition because good folks fail to do anything. All right. Let's talk about a weed for a minute. Bit. How many of you have done gardening before? How many of you have done gardening before?
many of you have done gardening before? How many of you have done something in the backyard? <coughs> come brother Lapons, come up for a second. Come this way. Anybody else? <coughs> Anybody else? Okay, got a lot of folks who are scared, so I'm gonna go ahead and call folks. If you don't mind. Come brother Talvi, come for a minute. Now, if you realize, you look at my head, you realize I have trouble getting stuff to grow. Alright, so you, you, you won't get to bear with me. However, when you plant your garden, do you just plant it and leave it alone for the weeds to come along and take over? No. If you go to Brother Tolliver's backyard and he has some colored greens growing, yeah. and the weeds are higher than the colored greens, yeah. what would you say about Brother Tolliver? Yeah. That he's not cultivating his garden. Say so everybody can hear me. He's not cultivating his garden. Brother Tolliver, what would we say about churches where weeds are allowed to flourish like if it's a norm? We're not cultivating our churches. We're not cultivating our churches, right? You know the interesting thing? We are to blame. We are to blame. The, the interesting thing we're going to learn in church is that when it comes to church development, church discipline, church growth, when it comes to weeding, it is our responsibility. We cannot pass the buck to somebody else, right? What happens when you allow your garden to be overcome by weeds? Say, say it one more time. Colin Greens will go up, grow up and die. So realize that when Jesus Christ is talking about letting the weed and the wheat grow, it is not the ideal situation because guess what? Some choking take place. He is saying that when the weed is in the midst, it is actually choking the life out of the weed. Wheat. Let me explain. Half of the reasons why Southside have so much problems. So half of the reasons why Adam Street or half of the reason North Street or wherever street you're on have so much problems is because more times than not, we allow the weed to become the wheat in the church. All right. Oh, Amen. Guess what happened? Those folks who really want to do something, the life is choked out of them. All right. And Jesus Christ is saying, yes, there are times we're going to let the weed and the wheat come along, but that's an exception to the norm. Yeah. Why? Let me get back to my mic. Stand close to the talk. Let me ask you a question. What, does, what do these two guys have in common? Anybody? They're men. Who said that? They're men, right? This is what Jesus Christ is talking about. Forget this case on, yes? He is saying in the parable with the weed and the wheat that the wheat is so closely looking like the weed that if you pull one up, you might destroy the other. See? Not that you allow the weed that you know is a clear weed to continue. A matter of fact, the word that is used there, H.E. Robinson said, is the word Donald. Donald is a wheat looking weed. A matter of fact, the only time you'll see the difference is when it comes to harvesting time. So when I was rolling around, then we're going to take the wheat and separate them, and we'll say, you know what? Let's gather the weed together and burn them. In other words, the weed is never desirable. It is something to get rid of, something to purge out. However, because we have lost our backbones in the church, thank you, gentlemen, I'll get you a minute again. Because we have lost our backbones in the church, we have allowed this parable to become the norm. When sin is prevalent in the church, our common excuse is, well, you're going to let the wheat and the tear grow together. i got some news for you. Whenever sin is present, prevalent, and known, Jesus is not giving us permission to use this power. That's right. He's not giving us permission. We need to get back to the idea of church discipline. Where church discipline is not just for the leaders, but it's for every single member. And less, less, less you're wondering, church discipline is not designed to get rid of folks. Church discipline is designed to save the soul yes, sir. of the sinner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To save the soul of the sinner. And by the way, you see I gave Brother Washington a whole bunch of booklets. That's for all the preachers. Make sure you get one. If you have a question, it's in there. That's part one of a series. If you want another copy, it's free. You can copy it and pass it out as much as you want. If you disagree with something, let me give you my number. 334. 447 1888. Don't ask somebody else to explain what I can explain for you. That's right. Back to the lesson. So he says that let the weed and the wheat grow together. At the day of harvest, there's going to be a separating. In the 
church, there are sometimes limping Christians that look like weeds, but really they are wheat. And that's why we've got to be careful. Why? There are some folks who will struggle with sin all the days of their life. They, they, they can't wait for Sunday to come along so they can get things right to try all over. we got to give room for those folks too. The problem is, there are also some folks in the church who has no intention. These folks have no intention of getting right whatsoever. All right. Matter of fact, hint, hint, they are just there to cause you problems. Yes, All right. So you decide to do something great here on Southside, they're going to throw some objections, and if you ask them to do something, they have no other alternative, no agenda. That's the weed sucking the life out of the wheat. Yes, sir. Guess what? we got to do some cleaning up. All right? Any questions? Any questions? Now, don't be afraid. Uh, worship was over here. It's a lecture ship. You can ask a question if you, if you like. I guarantee you I have an answer for you. All right, moving along. Preacher, stop scaring your folks into asking questions. Can you tell the folks? Come, come down the street for Bible study sometime. Anyhow, so moving along, Jesus Christ says, yes, why, why in the world would weeds show up in the miserable wheat? He said, because while men slept, mm -hmm. an enemy came in. An enemy came in. Now, if you have ever been in combat, you know that sometimes, especially in modern warfare, they try to get enemies involved to look like they're on your side, but to kill you. Right? Brother Brown, come from here, please. Have you been overseas, Brother Brown? I have. Who were you fighting? Different, different enemies. Different what? Keyword yeah. enemies, right? Right, right. You know the problem with it? Sometimes those enemies are easy to identify because they're shooting back at you. Am I correct? <laughs> but sometimes the enemy could have been right here walking along with you, waiting for you to get your guard down so they can drop a bomb in your life, isn't it? That's what the insurgent... Well, guess what? Come across here for a little bit, brother, bro. That's what Satan does. So God's kingdom, because of feeling the kingdom, they're used closely. In God's kingdom, guess what happened? While we stop doing our job, Satan comes in. And he sows some seeds. Some seeds of discord. Some, some seeds of backbiting. Some seeds of envy. Some, okay, you know what I'm talking about. And guess what happened? This weed is going to come up. And the weed is going to claim they have just as much right as you do. I have a say so in the church too. I got a vote. Hint, hint, preachers. We are no longer in a democracy when it comes to the church. Yes, sir. It's a theocracy. God rules. If your members don't like it, as I tell them at street, go somewhere else. So, bottom line, he knows what an enemy looks like if they're over there. The problem is when the enemy is standing right next to you, rubbing shoulders with you, and sucking the life out of you. And he says the enemy came in and sowed that seed. Why? Not so that the kingdom can look good, but so that the kingdom can self-destruct. Some of the greatest enemies of the church are the folks who have been in our baptistries, who have said that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but does everything that says that they are natives. Can I explain that to you? I know Brother Brown for a long time, so I'm going to use him. Brother Brown comes and says, I believe in God with his words standing there, right? We accept him into our fold, and over here, he lives every single thing that says God does next us. And that's what the weed does. The weed says one thing in words, but in action, it is something different. Right. And the Bible says, yeah, we got to put up with some of that because some things we just clear, kind of clearly identify. Sometimes we got to just put up with some stuff <coughs> for the benefit of the limping Christian who might look like a weed, but is really a weed. Right. Yes, sir. Any questions? Sure, what's the blue? Say one more time. Great, great question. Matter of fact, and I'm preachers as part of what I have in my notes. One of the things that we do 
as preachers, as leaders, as faithful members, is that we got to nourish the wheat. How do we nourish the wheat? We nourish the wheat by giving them a rich diet of the word of God. Uh -huh. Problem, problem is that we have major in dairy farms that we only give folks milk. You got to realize that there's a time when folks got to get some milk and then we need to graduate yeah. so the wheat can stand on its own by feeding some stuff stuff. Yes, yes, sir. yes we got to teach folks about baptism. Yes, we got to teach folks about repentance. Yes, we got to teach them about confession. But then we got to grow on and teach them about their responsibility when yes. Satan comes knocking on their door how to survive the hard stuff. Right the problem in the church is that more times than not, we give folks some good sounding antidotes but no substance to really live the real life outside the church doors. So pouring into the wheat is like fertilizer when I go to God's word because to me again, first, second Peter 1 verse 3 says, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So I go to God's word and give you a biblical way of dealing with worldly situations so that you can maintain your Christian identity. So how do we do it? By feeding folks over and over. The interesting thing is that when the church is properly feeding uh, its members, right, the weed is going to get some of that nutrients yes, that really belong to the wheat. Yes, but nevertheless, the wheat is going to get sufficient that it can overcome the wheat. Yes, Listen to me carefully. The wheat is going to get sufficient that it can overcome the wheat. Yes, sir. Too many of our church members are getting tripped up by folks who are just masquerading as Christians. And guess what happened? Dying in the process because they are not being fed sufficiently. Amen. The Bible says, again, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1, after he talks about that the time has come that they should have some men teach, did somebody teach them again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said that you got to go on from the basic or elementary principles of Christianity onto the solid stuff. Yes. Preachers, let me tell you this, right? And again, if you don't like it, see me after. Um, by the way, I brought my body guards, right? Um, preachers, <laughs> got to get to the stage where we just don't always hang the trough low down for everybody to eat. Right. Sometimes we're going to bring it up a little higher yes, so that folks can stretch up yes, to get to where uh -huh. we need to go. For too long, all we have done <coughs> is cater for the folks who are not mature. Right. While right. those who are really want to go into the next level, they are starving to death. Come on. So let's go back and tell the, the parable a little bit. So that's what we do with the wheat. And the wheat, how we nourish the wheat. The Bible says that judgment is coming. Yes. Uh, sure separation is coming. Yeah. Let me tell you the danger that you are in as church members when we misapply the wheat and the weeds to cover every single thing in the church. Somebody who is clearly in sin, that is living in sin, is out of fellowship with God. If you don't agree, see me after. Somebody who is living in sin is clearly out of fellowship with God. Let me get four people to come quickly while I make the next statement. Four people quickly. The thing about it is that when somebody is in sin, their fellowship with us is also broken. Amen. Listen to me carefully, right? You all get you all confident in your mind, right? Go ahead and hold each other's hand. <laughs> this is what fellowship looks like. Fellowship on the earthly level is where we are all together as one. Amen. And then, I'm not God, just, just representing, take illustration, and where God's connection now flows through everybody. Amen. Right? The interesting thing is that God knows those who are His. That's right. When the weed is present, the church doesn't know. But God knows. Amen. So there's an earthly fellowship that exists because we are going based on evidence. I use Brother Dawson to his Madam Street. So God's fellowship is connected while it's disconnected there. However, when the church misapplies this scripture in Matthew 13, the church holds on to fellowship with Brother Dawson when they know that they should break fellowship. In other words, it's clear that he is living a sinful life. He doesn't change. He is no longer in the weed wheat category 
He's just a straight up sinner who will not repent. Yes, sir. If the church maintains fellowship, want to maintain fellowship? <laughs> guess what goes away? Yes. You don't believe me? Read Revelation chapter 3. The Bible says that God said, Change, or I'm going to remove your candlestick. Change, or I remove your candlestick. However, we have lost our backbone as leaders Amen. and as a church because Amen. we are more interested in being body buddies with Brother Dawson than I say with Brother Dawson. Amen. You know the problem? No coward will make it into heaven. That's what it says. Yes, sir. Chapter 2, verse 1 and 7 says. For the fearful, oh sorry, back up, that's Revelation 21. That's right. We're going to get in a bit. But it says, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. In other words, we got to learn sometimes, yes, we got to put up with that weed, because we cannot tell, there's no clear cut, but whenever it is clearly known, fellowship has to go away. And why? Why do we, why do, we do this fellowship thing? Not because we hate Brother Dawson, yes, right, but because right. we're trying to get Brother Dawson the right with God, okay. so he can be back in the form. Amen. 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 Right. Any questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. Any questions? I've got 10 minutes according to Brother Washington. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> now, again, don't be afraid to ask questions. I, I told you I have an answer for you, even if it's that, that I don't know. All right? So, moving along. Not only would there be a harvest in time, but guess what? The mistakes that we make here, listen to me carefully, while we're alive, we can get them right. Yes, right. Yes, sir. When we die, they go get it right on those mistakes. So let's go back now to that cloud that is rolling in, that has the appearance that is going to bring some rain. However, you're in the midst of a drought, and all it's going to do is cause fire. That's when our church is. Refuse to let the standard of God, the word of God, be the authority in the church. If you remember Brother Curry, uh, Brother Curry said a while ago, he said, firstly, the sower sows, but he sows the word of God. If the word of God is not the standard in the church, then you have a group of people that are coming together in the name of God, but God is not present. All right. Okay. Listen to me again. No apologies, right? No apologies. You have a group of folks coming together, but God is not present. Okay. Let me tell you the risk that you're playing with. Come on. So I go to church for 50 years. Did a whole bunch of good stuff. A matter of fact, Sister Belford, I give away half of the stuff that I had, and then I died. And I hear, depart from me. I never knew you. You see, because I'm going to turn and say, Lord, then I prophesy in your name. Then I cast out demons. That's, that's Matthew 7 from verse 21, in case you don't know. Then I do many good works. Depart from me. Why? Because I did not allow the word of God to be the standard in the church. In developing intellectually, there are some things that's going to cause us a whole lot of hard burns. Yes. But we can't let our indigestion prevent us from eating good food. Yes, sir. Uh, I like that. In other words, <laughs> go down to Walgreens, get some tums, come and come back and feast on the table. Yes, sir. Uh. Because what you eat Hallelujah. is going to save your soul in the long run. Yes, sir. Yes. Many of my members know I don't eat any and anywhere. Right. Matter of fact, when I walk into a restaurant, I'm going to look at your score. Yes, yes, sir. Now, let me tell you, I've been in the military, and I've learned to eat eggs with flies. Yes, sir. They taste real good. Amen. When you're in the middle of nowhere with nothing else. <laughs> However, while I'm out here and I have a choice, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to choose to eat the best yes, at sir. the best. Why? Because I'm paying my money for it, right? Some of you all will even curse out the waitress. We're going to talk about it next week. Why? Listen to me carefully. Why eat garbage and think you're going to get to heaven? Why eat garbage and think you're going to get to heaven? In my last five minutes, let me share this with you. If you want to be a wheat and not a weed, you've got to start demanding more 
from your preachers yes, sir. and your teachers. Amen. Listen to me again. I don't care what they don't know right now. Yeah. What they don't know is fine. Let them go learn it. That's right. If they want to instruct you, if they want to tell you what the word says, let them start doing some real expository preaching and teaching and stop giving you the Kool-Aid to drink. Well, Reason well, being, the Kool-Aid looks good, tastes good, but it's not sufficient to give you nutrients. Yes, sir. Oh. When we start feasting on the depths of God's word, our churches become stronger. Yes, we do. So when we lose our jobs, we're able to live on. When we go down to the, the, the store, we are able not to curse out, but demonstrate Christian qualities. When our family is going through chaos, we are able to bring a scripture to bear on the issue. When we have problems in our homes, the courthouse will see us less. Yes, sir. But if we continue to feast on what weeds eat, don't be surprised when you don't bring forth no wheat germ. Jesus Christ said that the enemy has done this. Yes? Don't go because their roots are so intermingled, you might pull up one with the other. Let them grow. On the day of harvest, they'll be separating. You gotta understand. You gotta strive to be a wheat and not a weed. You may ask, preacher, well, how would I know if I am a wheat or a weed? Very simple. If every church problem, you are involved, more than likely you will win. All right. <laughs> more, than, more than likely you will win. Amen. <laughs> if we can count what days you come to church, then probably you will win. If you come to worship, but Bible study is not important, Probably you had another week now. If you are the person who come for the last 50 days and still giving that one dollar, 